Hi everyone, welcome back to Adulting with Micah. On this channel, I'll help educate you on how to tackle some grown up tasks in life, regardless of what stage in life you're in, and hopefully leave you feeling accomplished. On today's episode, we're going to discuss financial freedom. Have you seen this film, Get Smart With Money on Netflix? In today's episode, I'm going to discuss what I thought about the film and my key takeaways. But before we get started, if you can do me a favor, which I'd greatly appreciate, go ahead and click that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any of the updated videos that we have coming for you. Thanks. So if you haven't seen this already, Get Smart With Money is a film on Netflix that dropped in the fall of 2022. I just uncovered it actually this year, this past January of 2023. And it was a Friday night. My husband just got off work. So we were trying to find something to do, have like a fun date night at home. And one of the goals that we're having this year is to really do a better job at making sure that we are having more fun in the house, most importantly, so that we can save. So we figured, hey, let's check out what's on Netflix. And he was actually the one who discovered this film. And when I tell you I was so excited to see this film, I just had to do a review on it because I'm not sure if a lot of other individuals know that this film exists. For some of you who are new to this channel and may not know my background, I'm someone who paid off of over six figures of student loan debt and it was quite the journey that I have shared on this channel and we'll link other videos for you all to learn more about my background. But part of my passion in creating this channel is to really help individuals with educating them on ways for them to become financially free, for them to be independent and just really living their best lives. And so Netflix is pairing four financial gurus with four people. Well, actually it's five because one is a family, which we'll get into. But essentially they are pairing them one-on-one -on -one for the course of the next 12 months, so one year. And you know, at the start of the film, you meet the financial experts, you meet the characters, and then you get to follow their journey over the course of the year. And so just wanted to give you all that backstory. We'll start with Lindsay. I'm Lindsay. I've been living paycheck to paycheck. I'm trying to break out of this cycle. Lindsay is a bartender and the problem that Lindsay is facing is that her current day-to-day -day jobs or jobs, I should say she has two jobs, is that she works in the food service industry, specifically as a bartender. And she was able to share that, you know, she works 50 to 60 hours a week and she is still living paycheck to paycheck. And I thought that Lindsay is someone whose story resonates with me because I have been there. Heck, even sometimes current day, I still feel like I am still living paycheck to paycheck. And she is paired with Paula, who is someone that is ultimately trying to push her on being able to find avenues for her to be able to ultimately scale back on her two jobs and to eventually go at it, to go out on her own and develop as a business, as a, as a budding business owner. Living paycheck to paycheck is just something that is very common. It's very common for a lot of people that I know, not only um, in my personal life, but also too in different working environments and ultimately us trying to figure out how can you accumulate and build more? I will say that when I began my student debt payoff, I did my best with cutting out, buying coffee every day, going out to restaurants, but it still felt like even though I was able to commit to living on a budget, that income factor really played a crucial role in helping me to be able to plan for bigger expenses. And I will say that with Lindsay's story, kudos to her in being vulnerable, not only one for sharing her story, but she also brought in a very crucial element about her wanting to make enough money to be able to pay for her medication, to support her mental health. There's a strong relationship between money and finances and one's mental health. and you know, there's so many things we wanna do, whether it is not only taking care of ourselves, traveling, you know, buying a home, you know, just achieving really big life goals. And if your income is not able to meet the needs that you personally desire, it can be very overwhelming. It can be very depressing. And so I really enjoyed listening to Lindsay's story during this film. 
I think that this is something that is definitely applicable to many of us that are still struggling with living paycheck to paycheck, especially with the current day economy of inflation and just the cost of living going up. So the next person that we're able to follow is Tez. I thought football was the only way to make money and make a lot of it. I ended up getting released. My world came crashing down. That made me take a step back and open my eyes up to my money. And Tez is a former professional athlete. Specifically, he played in the NFL. And so Tez is paired with Ross Mack, who is an investment guru. Tez had a very interesting story because he was very open about how much money he made when he first signed on as a new player in the NFL and how I think his contract was in the high millions, like let's say 1.5 million. And when he describes how he started off with about 1.5, 1.6 million. And after having agent fees, taxes, purchasing a few homes, jewelry and traveling, he was left with about $500,000. He didn't have a whole lot left. And what he did have left, he knew that he needed to do something with it. He knew that there was much more that his money could do, but there is a great fear that he had with whatever money that he had left, how to properly place it in a vehicle so that he doesn't lose it like how he did on other things or other experiences. And that is something that is very important where there's a lot of fear when it comes to the market. I myself can speak personally about it and that even when I was setting up my retirement portfolios and previous work environments, you know, they would ask you, what is your risk tolerance? You know, do you kind of want to go calm and steady or do you want to go speed racer fast and things like that? And for me, I was someone that was just very cautious of, hey, you know what? I don't want to put a whole lot in, you know, because I don't want to lose anything. But the biggest thing that I would always forget is that as a 33 year old and when I started my 401k, which was definitely later in life in my late twenties, the benefit that I had on my side was time. So thankfully I am not at the age, I think it's 67 now of being able to draw down on my retirement. So I have the privilege of being able to see kind of ride the wave, ride the wave, ride the wave of what the stock market it is doing. And even right now, this is still a great time with the interest rates being high and the market being low. I believe that's how the correlation is. You're getting an opportunity to purchase stocks at a rate that would be better than probably when the market is doing well, you'd be spending more money for the same sort of unit for a stock. So, you know, I'm, that is a personal goal of mine this year too, is to really learn more about investing, not only from the real estate side, but also too from the index fund side. And Tess also mentioned something that was very important that him growing up as a young black man in his home life, there was no talks of how to invest, how to save. And he shows his family, he has a daughter, and ultimately his desire as a dad is to really be able to make the life for his daughter better than what he had. The next character that we follow is Ariana. I'm living the fear that if my car were to break down, I don't know how we would buy another one. She is a mother of two, and she is paired with Tiffany Alicia, aka the Budgetista, which I am personally excited about following their story because when I was in my student loan debt payoff journey, I had a Rolodex of podcasts and I had a ton of YouTube channels that I would follow, and Tiffany's uh, podcast with Mandy Woodroth Santos. It's called the, um, it's called Brown Ambition. It was so 
great listening to that podcast over the years that I was paying off my student loans because every week I would look forward to just hearing these two ladies talk about money, talking about the importance of wealth building, also to eliminating your consumer debt, um, your student loan debt, and just really finding a community of individuals that are in different stages in their life. And so having Tiffany be paired with Ariana, I was very excited because not only was I able, I'm used to listening to her on her podcast, but watching her visually on Netflix, I thought it was really cool because she is someone who's a former preschool teacher who talks to you about budgeting in a very basic and simple way. And it in fact helped me on my journey with really being able to figure out how many bills I owed. And so with Ariana, she is someone who, she grew up in an environment in her household where she explained that you know, money was not really something that you should really think twice about. And what I mean by that is that she grew up in an environment where her parents said, look, if you want something, you should get it. You deserve it, you work hard. And so it's definitely championing, hey, you know what? Treat yourself, you deserve it. YOLO, you only live life once. However, Ariana then explained that that led her into signing off for a bunch of student loan debt at an early age. That also, you know, explained how she was able to just rack up a lot of credit card debt. And in fact, from the numbers off the top of my head, she had about, I think, definitely over six figures in student loan debt. And she had a little under $50,000 in credit card debt. She definitely was someone who all she wanted to do was just travel. Tiffany had asked her, what is something that you would love to do? And she said, I just want to travel with my family and give them experiences, but I have this looming debt over my head and she just wasn't too sure on how she was going to get out of it. And so when I was hearing her story, I'm like, man, like that is relatable. And this story felt way too real because Eventually, when I had my sobering moment of, okay, look, let me look at my student loans. Let me see how much I owe. Let me go ahead and, you know, look at my credit card statements. I was so up to here with just confusion and anger and mostly sadness because I didn't know where to start. I'm like, how did I get all these credit cards? How did my credit card get so out of control? Why am I paying, you know, monthly interest because I wasn't paying off my balance in full? And then I would think about it and I'm like, man, like I'm looking at the statement. I got brunch on here, shopping. And then one of the cool things about Ariana's story was that she said that most of her purchases, she didn't even know where they came from. She said she'd look at her bank statements and she wouldn't even be able to recall what those particular expenses was. And so one of the cool visuals for her story is that, you know, you go into her closet and there's like dollar tags on jackets, toys, home appliances. And you just start to look and you start to kind of do a mental inventory on like cha-ching, 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 cha-ching on all the things that are being added up. And then unfortunately you get your statement and you're not really sure First of all, how you're going to pay it off? How'd you get here? And so Tiffany just sort of just kind of, you know, sets the foundation of know your numbers, start off with the baby budget, and then that way you're just slowly building. And so if you are someone who is scared to look at your bank statements or, you know, scared to kind of look at what sort of loans are out there in your name, Ariana's story is someone who I thought was, she was very brave and just kind of showing how she got there and showing how she wants to fix her issue. And she definitely was someone that is worth looking at because I think her story is very relatable for many of us. And the last character, or I should say characters, is a married couple who has gotten paired with Pete from Mr. Money Mustache. We are earning a lot for the first time. We're also spending a lot. You're spending $1,200 a month on groceries. That is banquet level spending. Their issue is that they are making a lot of money, but they also want to be able to retire early. And so 
What I found interesting in this particular situation was that the wife is a psychotherapist and so she is growing her business and year over year, you know, I think she started off at 70,000 and then the next year it was 150. And then I think as of the most least, as at the time that this film was being uh, shot, I think she was scheduled and projected to make, I think, 300,000. And so you could definitely see that, you know, her salary has definitely helped the family. And then her husband also too, being there and taking care of the home, taking care of the kids, like the two of them were working hand in hand, which I thought was really cool to see because traditionally it's the opposite. The guy's the breadwinner, the wife is, you know, the stay at home parent. And so it was really cool to see the roles reversed and what they wanted and needed help with from Mr. Money Mustache was, hey, if there's anything that the pandemic taught us is that essentially life is too short and they wanted to spend more time with their kids. They wanted to experience more life moments as a family rather than sort of being on this hamster wheel chase of working. And so they needed guidance on understanding how can we, with the salary, that our family has, use it in a way where we can no longer have to work. There's a term called FIRE, financial independence, retire early. And pretty much it's a movement of individuals from all ages, but I find it's mostly kind of like the millennial group, um, or at least those are the stories that I've seen the most of folks who are just kind of like, you know what? Working for the next 30 years, 40 years is not how I want to spend my life. Instead, how can I go ahead and work, live, like let's say if I'm making $100,000 a year, I'm going to live off of $20,000 and I'm going to invest that $80,000 to pay off debt to, you know, essentially you are eliminating your debt, minimizing your debt. So then the funds that you have been able to save over time, it's invested and in so that you're able to live off of your, I guess, dividends in a way. And so that also would require, makes me think about Tez's story um, and how he's investing in the market. But essentially, this family is trying to figure out how can we make our money grow so that we can scale back on work so we can really take the moments in and you know this wife is not having to work so many hours but really being able to spend more time with her family and she did say hey you know what i wish i could spend more time with my family i'm quite envious of my husband being able to be the sole provider for our kids because i'm constantly working and i want to be able to scale back from that so that us as a family can spend time together and i just thought that was so beautiful because yeah those are the moments that matter like i think back to the pandemic and all the people and that we've lost or just have gotten sick and it's just it just it's just a reminder that life is very short and so what are some of the things that you want to do to be able to cherish these memories with the ones you love thank you so much for joining me today on adulting with micah if you enjoyed this video please be sure to click that subscribe button ring that bell for notifications and let me know in the comment section below if you're going to check out get smart with money and i'll see you on the next video take care